Okay. Uh, welcome and thank you for being for joining us for the 6 p.m. Um, City Council meeting. Today is Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. Let the roll call reflect that all council members are present, with the exception of Council Member Stevens, who's asked to be excused, and Council Member Nadolski is joining us electronically. Um, in the work session, we read the chair's statement to hold electronic meetings. So that is on the record in there. Um, so moving along, we will begin with a Pledge of Allegiance, and that will be given by uh, Vice Chair White. Thanks, Chair Blair. Please rise if you are able. And repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair White. And now we would ask um, all those who are participating with us to join us in a moment of silence. Thank you. First up, we have a recognition, um, recognizing the late John Prescott, board member of Roads to Independence for providing invaluable contributions to our community. And we have asked council member, uh, council member Hire to read this for us. Yes, thanks Chair Blair. I think we have a few Prescott family members. I think we have Doris. Um, it's Annette, I don't know if I, I don't see, maybe that's Richard Prescott. And I was looking for Carl. He's the one I, it was kind of a little troublemaker around here uh, when they lived in our area. So <laughs> anyway, it's my pleasure to, uh, to, to read this recognition. Um, and that is the Ogden City Council and Mayor proudly recognize John Prescott for providing invaluable contributions to the Ogden community. A kind and effective advocate for people with disabilities, John Prescott epitomized the Ogden spirit and lifted those around him. He was a man of great faith, integrity, and demonstrated great devotion to the Ogden community. Early in his life, John con contracted polio and later suffered from post-polio syndrome, but he never slowed down. As the co-chair of the Board of Directors for Roads to Independence, John helped promote awareness and service for people with disabilities throughout the throughout Northern Utah. John regularly attended city council meeting and used his voice to raise awareness for people with disabilities in the community. In 2018, he issued a challenge to the Ogden City Council to be in a wheelchair or on crutches for 24 hours to gain a better understanding of what it was like to have a physical disability. This experience taught council members valuable lessons and made them more aware of the daily challenges people with disabilities face every day. We are saddened by John's passing and offer our sincere condolences to his family, friends, and other close associates. John was one of Ogden's own, and we are confident his legacy will continue for many years to come. This is presented the 16th day of March, 2021. Um, it was my pleasure to know John. He moved into our neighborhood while he was still on crutches. He, he was uh, getting along uh, as best he could. He, he, uh, I think he knew that the wheelchair was, was in his future. Uh, so he moved into a home that would tolerate that. Um, and he had quite the little wheelchair. We, we have an outdoor air uh, pump on my house and he'd come up and fill up his tires there. So I got to see him from time to time. Quite a, quite a fun loving uh, man. I, I loved him and I loved his kids that lived here with him. And it was really sorry to see him pass. I'm glad his family is here to, to uh, uh, receive this recognition. So um, anyway, that's, that's the presentation. Um, who wants to speak on behalf of the family? 
I could I could say a few words. Um, I guess we'd just like to thank you guys. We <clears throat> certainly saw the video of the person who who did take his challenge to ride around Ogden in a wheelchair, and we've appreciated that as of as his children, and and we appreciate that you guys have listened to him and have made changes because of him. So thank you. Thank you. Just one little note, when he got his wheelchair, we used to, he used to let me uh, kind of take it for a little race tracks around the church. And uh, one thing I noticed is he, he never had the governor activated. It was always full blast for him. He, he went everywhere as fast as that chair would go. Uh, which is kind of in line with his personality. Thank you. Sure. Yes, Can please. I say a word? Sure. Thank you. Uh, my my condolences to John's family for sure. Uh, like Councilmember Hire, I'm glad I got a, a chance to know him. I didn't know him as well as Councilmember Hire, but for what I did know about him, I'm sure thankful that we crossed paths because he uh, he put push to all of us to, to learn more and the one thing i did learn from john is that if he were with us today he'd only ask one thing and it's that we play in that basketball game so i hope we follow through on that commitment even though uh john is not here to push us but i think his legacy will always be there to remind us that uh that we've got a game to play and we've got uh more to learn so thanks for the for uh being here with us today to the family and uh we'll miss them and god bless you guys uh thank you councilman nadalski uh, I, I would just like uh, to tell say carl we missed him I, I i don't see him on this uh on this zoom call so make sure that he knows that we missed him will do we will do that he works three jobs so but we will let him know thank you thank you sorry chair for interrupting sorry i was just gonna say um, during my time on the council, there's a lot of people that have come in and, and shared with us. And uh, John truly was um, one in a million. He came regularly there for quite a while, and he always had a smile on his face. And he always asked us to be good to each other and kind to each other and, and look out for each other and, and just to make our city better. And he truly was someone that, that made our city better. And I don't know if he was happy because he knew we were going to lose and lose bad in that basketball game, but he truly did get a great joy for, for challenging us. And I agree with Councilmember Nadalski. We, we have a game to play. Um, it's time for us to take our, take our beating respectfully and, and just play that game and, and get it out there and, and, and keep his legacy alive. So I, I appreciate John and everything that he not only did for Ogden, but has taught me also as a council member. So. Thank you. And I don't know if there's any other comments by council members. I just want to give a shout out to council member Nadolski because uh, he, he was the one that actually took that challenge of being on that, uh, that chair. And I, I, I think that was very, uh, very good. And, and certainly uh, very important uh, because he got to share his experience with all of us. So just wanted to uh, wanted to give him a shout out too for that. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to his family for being here tonight. Thank you all. Thank you for letting us know and letting us come. We appreciate it. Usually when we do this in person, we have you come up and we shake hands and we clap. And so let's, let's do the virtual clap. There we go. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, in moving along, um, next up is the approval of minutes. First up is the work session of December 15th, 2020. Uh, Vice Chair White. Yes, Chair Blair, I have reviewed those and they seem to be accurate, accurate to my recollection. Thank you. And the regular meeting of December 15th, 2020, Councilmember Lopez. Yes, Chair, I review the minutes. Uh, they seem accurate to the best of my recollection, and I move that we approve the minutes. 
I'll second. Thank you. We have a motion to approve the minutes listed by Councilmember Lopez and a second by Councilmember Heyer. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That passes. Uh, next up is the one item listed under common consent and it's proposed ordinance 2021-10 among amending the Ogden Municipal Code to address changes to the utility fees and to revise water utility rate and fee provisions, setting the public hearing for April 6, 2021. Chair, I'd make a motion that we uh, um, adopt the common consent agenda. I second. second. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Heyer and a second by Councilmember Lopez to approve the item listed under common consent and set the public hearing for April 6, 2021. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do any opposed? That passes. Uh, next up are public hearings. Um, for first, we have the Ogden Hinkley Airport and our presenters are Justin Sorensen and Bryant Garrett, the airport manager. So I'm not sure who's going to go first. Uh, um, I can go first, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and Council Members for uh, the opportunity to present <clears throat> to you tonight on these two items uh, listed under common consent. Um, what we thought would be easiest is to, to present the information on, on both of them at the same time as they both go together. And then if you have any questions following um, a couple slides that I have, uh, Brian is here with us and he can answer any of those in regards to the, the projects uh, going on out of the airport. So let me share my screen with you. All right, and is everybody able to see? Let's see, here we go. All right, so the, the, the two items for consideration this evening, um, the first one is an amendment to the fiscal year 2021 to 2025 CIP plan, um, AR091, which it's already in the plan but the proposed um, changes were, were, we felt that they were necessary, that they needed to have an amendment done to the plan. And so this has already gone to planning commission and they voted uh, to, to approve this um, change um, to, the, to the CIP brief. But in essence, what this does is it calls out for some uh, uh, more changes um, in, in the infrastructure out on the west side of the airport. Uh, listed here some of the items that are being proposed in that in that project. Uh, we've previously funded this project with some, uh, I think it was 150,000 in in a prior year. Uh, but tonight, with with this proposal before you, the first part would be under proposed ordinance 2021-12 would be to amend the CIP plan with the changes in this CIP brief. Uh, the second portion would be the proposed ordinance 2021-11, which would be a budget amendment to recognize uh, these the funds that for this project, which is a, a state appropriation from the from UDOT in approximately six million dollars. So those are the two items before you tonight for consideration. Um, and with that, I'll open it up to any questions that uh, I can answer or Bryant. Are there any questions from council members for either um, Justin Sorensen or Brian Garrett? Uh, just one clarification. I, I think uh, this is just part of the money. If this is this is one year's worth of uh, of this grant, and we're going to get another uh, chunk next year. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, this would be the first portion that the the state has um, adopted or appropriated, and so. The hope is that there would be an additional, I believe, four million uh, that would go as part of this, totaling ten million. Okay, thank you. I, I, I was just going to make a little commentary. I, I went to the airport, spent a few hours with Bryant, and he and we drove around to the west side over there, and uh, it does need a little work over there. So it's it's good that we can have this money to help uh, develop out there because that's that's good space, but it needs a lot of a lot of uh, help. So kind of exciting to get this. Good. And thanks, Brant, for taking that time with me. Appreciate that. My pleasure. 
Okay, if there's no other comments or questions for our presenters, um, this is a public hearing so we can accept public input on these two items. Um, maybe we could have Eric just explain that for those that would like to participate in the public input. Absolutely, thank you, Chair. For those of you who'd like to participate in tonight's public hearing um, on these items, you must be joining us via Zoom. You can raise your hand by using the raise hand feature in the bottom of your application. Please remember to state your name for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. Okay, so if anyone who's joining us would like to um, have input on these two items, go ahead and raise your hand and we can take that input now. Chair, I'm seeing familiar names, but no hands going up. Um, so I will make a motion that we close the public hearing on item uh, A. I think it's, uh, yeah, item A. Okay. I second. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Councilmember Heyer to close the public hearing on these two items and a second by Councilmember Lopez. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Okay, that passes, and I would now um, look for a motion. Chair, I would make a motion that we adopt proposed ordinance 2021 12. Second. Thank you. We have a motion to adopt proposed ordinance. 2021-12 uh, by council member Heyer and a second by vice chair White. Um, this is a roll call vote. Council member Chaburka. Aye. Council member Heyer. Aye. Council member Lopez. Aye. Council member Nadolski. Aye. Vice chair White. Aye. Chair Blair. Aye, that passes. Thank you. Chair, I'll make a motion that we adopt proposed ordinance 2021-11. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by uh, Council Member Heyer to adopt proposed ordinance 2021-11 and a second by Vice Chair White. This too is a roll call vote. Council Member Heyer. Aye. Council Member Lopez. Aye. Councilmember Nadolski. Aye. Councilmember Chaburka. Aye. Vice Chair White. Aye. Chair Blair. Aye. Uh, that that passes. Thank you. Chair, can I just make a, a really quick comment? And sure. And I just want to. I um. So we have been working with um administration and our finance um team to really work on the CIP and I think um this is another one of those where when they bring things to us consistently and um early it's easier for us to just uh, understand them and move forward and so I again applaud our financial team of what they were doing or what they've been doing and want that to continue so thank you for my, for that Thank you. Okay, next up is the fiscal year 2021 budget and salary schedule amendment for uh, building services. Um, and we have quite a few here to present for us. Uh, we have Mara Brown, Justin Sorensen, Leslie Judkins and Jared Johnson. So I will turn it over to you all and you can, you can determine who goes first. Great. Thank you, Chair Blair, members of the council. I will start the presentation and uh, if there are any questions, we have others available. I'll go ahead and share my screen. Okay, um, are you able to see that? Not yet. Not yet, Not yet. okay, okay, got that right here. 
There we go. Hey. Thank you. Um, this budget opening addresses two issues. And the first is a, uh, a staffing change. Uh, there's a small budget opening uh, associated with an amendment to the FY21 salary schedule to adjust the salary ranges for the uh, uh, certain a uh, building inspectors and plan reviewers and it adjusts the range um, up for a total of eight positions. And as I briefly mentioned in the work session, when we discussed this item, this was, um, we don't uh, often open up the staffing document uh, during the middle of the budget year, but this was a necessity due to uh, the high demand on this type of employee. Um, uh, in, the, in the transmittal, uh, we discussed that uh, uh, during, during um, actually during the, the recession in, in the 2009, 2010 uh, period, Ogden uh, laid off a number of these uh, types of employees uh, during that recession period, and um, uh, you know we're we're uh, now that we have this uh, we have the number of been a huge demand on uh, this type of work, especially during the pandemic, um, where we've seen an increase in. Uh, um, home um, home improvements and construction activities, and and just a uh, requirement for our city inspectors to go out and um, and assist with these projects around uh, the city. And uh, during that time, other other communities in our region have also experienced an increase in the need for these types of positions, planners, inspections, and so there's actually been an attempt to. Uh, uh, really uh, make offers to our employees during this time period. And so we are requesting this change and an increase in these positions in order to uh, keep these employees that are, that are um, needed um, for the city right now. So that's the, re uh, the request here for those positions and the budget opening that goes with it. There's um, an adjustment in, in this uh, for the remainder of the fiscal year a little over $8,000. And um, that would have been a little bit higher for an entire fiscal year, but that will be, um, the entire amount will be put back during the uh, FY22 budget process. So that's the part of this budget opening that goes with the building services wages adjustment. And the second part of this budget opening is to recognize revenue that came from the sale of, uh, of, of used uh, vehicles on gov.com. And um, we received um, back about an amount of you know, $286,000. And we're requesting that that um, revenue be recognized and appropriated uh, into the fleet replacement. And that proceeds on, on a schedule, on a prioritization and um, we will be purchasing replacement vehicles with that revenue. So that is, that is really the total of this budget opening. Okay, thank you, Mara. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mara or any other of the other presenters? Chair Blair, I, I do have a question. I'm, okay. I, I'm not sure it's directly related to this, although the, at the legislature this year, um, a bill was passed that allowed um, companies to hire their own inspectors. Is that figured into this kind of a thing? Is, is it going to change our need for that kind of a, an employee? Um, how is all that going to you know, figure into this? Now, my understanding is there's a timing component to that. So if, if the city is not responding within a certain time period, but Ogden really hasn't been a, a non-responsive city with respect to that. So I don't think the, that will be affecting the demand on the city services. So, uh, so this may help to respond quicker and, uh, and be a little bit more responsive? Right, right. Well, yeah, I think that will that is the general... Um, philosophy behind, behind that to encourage cities to be responsive to those requests and um, if they don't meet that timeline then 
the developer can go out and, and seek an inspector. That concerns me some, but not with respects to this particular uh, petition, but maybe we could talk about that some other time. But um, anyway, thank you, appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? If not, we can go ahead and open it up for public input on this item. I believe we still have the same attendees um, that already heard Eric's speech on how to do it. But if you do would like to um, participate in the public input for this item, uh, just use the raise your hand feature and we can allow you to do that. Chair Blair, I think there's actually one less in our attendees list now. Um, and I will, uh, seeing no hands being raised, I will make a motion that we close the public hearing. Second. Thank you. We have a motion to close the public hearing by council member Heyer and a second by vice chair White. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? That passes. Um, with that, I would go ahead and entertain a motion on this item. Chair, I'll make that motion then that we adopt uh, ordinance 2021-13. I second. Thank you. We have a motion to adopt proposed ordinance 2021-13 by council member Heyer and a second by council member Lopez. This is a roll call vote. Councilmember Lopez. Aye. Councilmember Nadalski. Aye. Councilmember Chiburka. Aye. Councilmember Heyer. Aye. Vice Chair White. Aye. Chair Blair. Aye. That passes. Thank you. Um, next up is public comments. Uh, this is an opportunity to address the council regarding concerns or ideas on any topic. Um, please state your name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes. Um, and just before we begin, I'll go ahead and read This, our statement regarding uh, public comments. Maybe if I can pull it up. Okay, um, just a reminder that comments regarding questions posed, comments regarding questions posed during the public comment. Questions posed during public comment will be noted and answered at the end of all public comments. If the council has the answers to the questions, the council will respond to those questions. For questions that relate to administrative matters, the mayor may choose to respond to those during his comment period. Questions for the council or the administration can always be sent to citycouncil at ogdencity.com. With that, we will now go ahead and um, take your public comment. Um, first up, we have Keith Sato. Go ahead, Heath. Um, the time is now yours. Hi, Heath Sato, Ogden resident. Um, speaking of uh, responding to public comments, if you have the answers, it's been over a month and I still have no answers to all my questions about the Brown Ice Cream Building sale. This week, I would like to ask which of you have asked these questions of the administration and do you have any answers tonight? The only council person to contact me about this had no answers to share with me. I'm only asking for accountability here. Honest answers should come quickly. The length of time it is taking to answer these simple questions is only making me more suspicious that something is very wrong here. Why is it taking more than a month to come up with the truth? I'll ask some of these questions for the third or fourth time now. Where are the listings that the broker would have created if he was actually working for the city and not the buyer? 
Why did Brandon Cooper tell you that the broker was listing this building in all the usual places? Was Mr. Cooper misled or was Mr. Cooper misleading you? Do any of you truly believe that the broker whose professional career is evaluating, appraising, buying and selling property just botched the size of this building by over 50% and that Brandon Cooper didn't even notice that the buyer himself honestly had no idea what the real size was of the building he was about to develop? Isn't it Mr. Cooper's job to understand and evaluate commercial property so you don't have to? How did the professional broker and Brandon Cooper get the valuation of this building so wrong? Is there any accountability for this failure? Is there ever any accountability? These questions matter. We're talking about at least hundreds of thousands of our dollars being thrown away here and potentially millions more on other projects with selection processes that are just as opaque. Why is there a competitive bidding process on, say, small art projects in the city, but not a multi-million dollar development? The system is wide open for corruption, as I see it, and I'm not getting any answers that make me feel more comfortable about it. There is one question you should all be able to answer right now. Based on false data, Mr. Cooper gave you a value for that building. I asked you if your decision to sell the building for that valuation was at all influenced by that valuation. Not one of you answered that question. Not one. Are you embarrassed that you were misled? We're left with the appearance that nobody actually cares that they were lied to. And I refuse to believe that is true. I know you are good people, but we need you to have the courage to seek the truth, even if it makes you uncomfortable. Questions are private and not public purview, but please, you need to acknowledge that you have heard these questions and that you share my concerns. At the very least, tell me you're working on it and what date you'll have an answer for us. You need to demand these answers from the administration before any more movement is made on developing this property. Thank you. Now enjoy all your secret meetings tonight. <laughs> Thank you, Heath. We'll give it just another minute. I don't see any other hands raised. Okay, I don't see any other hands raised. Um, so we'll go ahead and move on. Um, comments from the mayor or administration. Thanks, Chair. I just want to give a shout out to the Weber State football team. They pulled out a, a good victory and uh, made our city proud of uh, with a with a great victory. I do want to point out, even though he's not here, that Councilmember Stevens was a little off on the score, but he did predict who was going to win. I also wanted to give a shout out to uh, Weber State's cross country team that. Participated in the national championships in Oklahoma and, and did, had some hunters who did very well. So we we give shout out to Weber State. Thanks. That's all I have tonight. Thank you. Any comments from council members? I'd like to make a quick comment, if you don't mind, Chair. Yes, please. Um. First of all, I appreciate Heath's uh, questions, and I think that we've already corresponded on those issues. Um, and then also, I just wanted to mention I had a delicious dinner tonight from Sonora Grill. It's the Dining for Dollars week-long event at uh, Sonora Grill this week. They usually have a one-day event, as you all probably know, that um, supports uh, scholarships at Weber State for undocumented students. And so this um, week, they're actually doing it the week-long. So I encourage you to support Sonora not only this week, but every week, because you know how it is um, with the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, a lot of restaurants have been hard hit. So let's, let's support local. Thank you. Okay, any other comments from council members? Chair, I'd like to say a couple things if you Please. Good. Uh, just wanna say that I, I guess in response to Heath's comments, uh, 
want him to know that uh, I have asked questions. I think a number of us have asked the questions, if not every one of us. Um, we've given Brandon very fair opportunities to dialogue on some of the questions that you've posed and the questions that we've posed. And uh, while I agree with Heath on the importance of accountability, I think the answers I've gotten in the process I've used to, to allow Brandon a fair opportunity to respond have not led to the, all of the same concerns that, that uh, Mr. Sato has, but um, uh, I, I do understand uh, his concerns for transparency and accountability. So that's why I felt it was important for me to say that. I also think it's really important to note that again, something that I said last week, but is worth mentioning time and again, is that um, we've asked for the same thing from the administration. And I believe that, you know, Brandon has done a really uh, good job and has tried really hard to be uh, as responsive to everything that we ask of him, that he uh, continues to uh, speak to us with full truth and transparency as we know it. Uh, we, we absolutely rely on him for his expertise and his recommendations, but, and we expect a lot of him. Um, Perfection is not one of them, unfortunately, but uh, that's not something we should expect of anybody, but we certainly expect greatness um, from him and we believe that we, that we get it. And, uh, but I don't want the public to think that we're not asking questions or that we're doing something um, in the dark that uh, would be shady. It's, it's nothing even close to the truth like that. Uh, I just think that there are developments where um, we have a lot of strings and requirements the city. Uh, this particular property is no different. We asked a lot of the purchaser um, at that time before signing the contract. The number of terms be upheld for the city and that just so y'all know the sound of freedom is not all over this very loudly i think council member nadalski got out of the headphone <laughs> Are you still there, Ben? Okay. Chair, I, I, if, if we're, maybe we can wait for Ben to see if he can get back on to finish his comment, but, but I'd be happy to take a minute and, and kind of respond to Heath's um, implication. But I, I think that, uh, the reason it's been hard to answer those questions is because they're not the right questions. They don't fit an RDA development. They they fit a city council uh, project where we're trying to seek uh, you know fair market values and competitive uh, pricing and things of that nature. But RDAs are so so much different than that that the questions he's asking don't fit. And uh, you know I kind of. Uh, we oftentimes, as an RDA, when we find ourselves with blighted areas or areas that were like, you know, the old Twinkie building, the old hostess building, we often give those away to a developer to get a project done that will give us tax base in the future. And this is no different. Um, my, my own opinion is that the Brown ice cream building doesn't have value for this project. And I don't really see why we wanna keep it. Um, I think it would be a, a better asset to the city um, by putting it into the, the development that the, the, the developer, you know, just making the development that much bigger. Um, it would help the city overall better if we did that. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, and I, I don't know who else shares it, if anybody shares it, but, um, but I, I just think he's asking the wrong questions. I'm, that, that's all I can to, to respond to that. You know, we are trying to be very responsive and, and responsible with, um, you know, our decisions 
for the benefit of the city and the taxpayers. And, and I think all of the council members, I, I think I can speak for all of you that, that you have put a lot of mental energy into this and, um, and considered his questions to the best fit that we can for this project. You know, the, uh, the accountability is important. The transparency is important. Um, but RDAs are different than, than, than these other things. And they just, they just work differently. So that's, that's maybe my response. Thank you. Yeah, I will go ahead and, and just make a note that I can't remember with all the Zoom meetings, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, but uh, Vice Chair White and I sat in a meeting with, with Mr. Brandon Cooper and he went through all, all of these questions and it was my understanding that he had reached out to Mr. Sato to go over these also. Um, and so I, I agree with what's been said by their council members. Uh, we have taken these comments to heart. We have investigated, we have continued to try to get those answers and, and, and move that forward and, and get that information. And I believe from what I understand that Mr. Cooper has, has offered that information also to, to Mr. Sato. So I, I appreciate both sides. I appreciate Mr. Sato bringing that to our attention. And I also appreciate Brandon being willing to, um, to make a deeper dive into that and, and explain that more to us and, and, and shed a little bit more light on that to help us understand it even better. So I don't know if Ben is back. Yeah, I, I am sorry. Okay. I lost connection. Can you, can you tell me where I was when I lost connection? I thought that I was I was really poetic in my comments, so I can just replicate. <laughs> yeah. Usually, I write down everything you say, but this time I, I didn't have a pen nearby. I know you were hanging on every word, but yeah. I guess the gist of my comments were that I don't want uh, Mr. Sato or anyone else in the public to think that there's something shady or crooked happening behind the scenes. That's far from the fact. The, the fact is that uh, Brandon offered any and all information when the proposal, but also um, he offered all of that same information in, in response to Mr. Sato's questions. Um, I think every one of us has taken them up on it. And, um, you know, while we we expect greatness from, from Brandon all the time, we, we won't expect perfection, but we still believe, I still believe we did the right thing for the city. And, um, and if it wasn't part of my comments that made it on the record, I also want to commend Brandon for his efforts to be transparent and forthright with us. Um, I'd say in the last year, our relationship with uh, Brandon and the council has been as positive as ever because of those efforts. And so he's gone to, as far as he can and back again to get us the information we need. I think he's made the same offer to Mr. Sato. I hope Mr. Sato takes him up on it in person, um, not just in an email exchange because there's a lot of things that can be lost in, in translation in an email that I think should be caught can be resolved through a conversation with one another. Thanks, you guys. Yep, thank you. Are there any other comments from council members? I, I just have one quick comment. I, you know, I heard uh, council member Hire say something about the, the uh, I don't know, I'm gonna use my words, not yours. Um, the value of that building and um, is there a, a need to look at the, again, we, we're looking at the historic nature. Is there a need to look at, is it, is it, is it a valuable asset to that, that development? And I guess maybe I would encourage uh, our staff to reach out to administration to ask that question and actually get an answer back because I have heard um, council member hire, I've heard from other council members, the same um, sentiment that you just had mentioned. So um, I, I guess I would ask that question. Is it, is it even a valuable piece of uh, property right now? And, and it doesn't have to be answered tonight, um, but I would maybe like to know that answer. I'd like to second that as well. Sorry, I should have included that in my comments, Chair. Yeah, that's a great question, Marsha. I appreciate you at answering or asking that question because I, I think that is something that I think we need to dive into. Um, you know, if if we can make the project better with it or without it, that's what we need to know. Um, it was a long time ago that that was pre presented to us, and I, it's kind of been hard for me to remember how it unfolded. 
it was really your question. I just restated it. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Chair? If there's no, yes. I have a, a different comment, a separate okay. comment. Um, hold on real quick, please. Uh, I, I'm, I'm wondering about the ordinance for uh, trailer, uh, food trailers. I asked our council uh, staff today, and they indicated that it's been about maybe two years since we put our request uh, to planning and the administration to um, try to find out about uh, revising uh, the ordinance. And I would like to know uh, maybe what's happened. I second that, even though it's not a motion. So if, if Mark wants me to call him out, I'll call him out. Mark, can you tell us something about this? Yeah, I think planning's had a lot on their plate, and um, I don't know that this rose up where it should have. It, we've refocused that, and I know that they have someone working on it, and I think they're hoping to be able to have something back to you guys soon. I don't know the timing, but I know that they are working on it. All right, so I, I would really appreciate uh, just um, maybe more pointed uh, uh, information about these. Uh, and if we can have something, uh, some kind of a follow up, I would really appreciate it. Uh, and if we can't, then, you know, I'll, I'll see what other options we may have. But it would be nice to have some follow up. Thank you. And, and and also, I mean, we're coming into the spring and this is the time where food trucks and food trailers want to get out and be out. So, um, you know, anytime sooner than later. Okay. Thank you. If there's no nothing further, I would go ahead and entertain a motion to move into a closed executive session. Chair, I'd make that motion that we adjourn into a closed executive session for one of the items listed in the agenda. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Councilmember Heyer to adjourn into a closed executive session and a second by Councilmember Lopez. Uh, this is a roll call vote. Councilmember Nadolski. Aye. Councilmember Chaburka. Aye. Councilmember Heyer. Aye. Councilmember Lopez? Aye. Vice Chair White? Aye. Chair Blair? Aye. Thank you. And then we'll adjourn this meeting after the closed executive session and reconvene for the special RDA meeting. <laughs> Redevelopment Agency meeting for Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. Um, just for point of reference, we read the chair's statement in the work session. So with that, we'll move on to roll call. Uh, let all council, or let the record reflect that all council members are present, with the exception of council member Stevens, who is asked to be excused. And uh, council member Nadolski is joining us um, via telephone. First up is approval of minutes. Um, we have the regular meeting of January 12th, 2021. Board Member Chaburka. Yes, uh, Chair, I have read those minutes and they're accurate. Thank you. And the closed executive session of January 12th, 2021. Board Member Hire. Yes, Chair, they appear to be correct. Thank you. And the special meeting of January 26th, 2021. Board Member Nadolski. Yep, they're correct. Thank you. Perfect. Make a motion that we pass the minutes as presented. Second. Uh, we have a motion to adopt the minutes um, by Board Member Nadalski and a second by Board Member Hire. This is a voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
that passes. Uh, next up is the consideration of adjourning into a closed executive session. Chair, I would make a motion that we adjourn into a closed executive session for one of the, list, the items listed in the agenda. Second. There we go. Um, we have a motion to adjourn into a closed executive session by board member Heyer and a second by Vice Chair White. This is a roll call vote. Board member Chaburka. Aye. Board member Heyer. Aye. Board member Lopez. Aye. Board member Nadalski. Aye. Vice Chair White. Aye. Chair Blair. Aye. That passes, thank you.